During the last decade, medical science has made incredible progress. However, one of the most intriguing and fascinating medical breakthrough regards to stem cells. Since the cloning of Dolly, the world's most famous sheep in 2003, the name stem cells is on the newspapers and it raises political and ethical debates. To stem cells could be considered the fountain of eternal youth. Recently, the Nobel Prize for Medicine 2012 has been awarded for stem cell research. Have you ever spent some time to understand what do you really know about them? Why are they so important? And how can you benefit from stem cell research? To answer these questions, we have to take some steps back to the origin of life. After a long trip to find a female egg, the male sperm cells stop the fight of their life. A fight that only one of them will win. The moment the sperm cell enters the egg, a drastic cellular change occurs. At this time, cells make exact copies of themselves and start to reproduce over and over and over. Those structures are called blastocysts and contain embryonic stem cells. Embryonic stem cells come up, a proliferate indefinitely in culture and have the potential to differentiate in all 220 cell types of our body. Embryonic stem cells is not only allowing scientists to understand basic biological events leading to human development, but also have the potential to be used in cell therapy to treat diseases such as diabetes or Parkinson's. It is currently possible to produce heart, blood, or skin cells in the laboratory by mimicking physiological signals. However, embryonic stem cells raises ethical concerns to the public due to the fact that they are derived from human embryos. In this regard, it is important to stress that embryonic stem cells use in research they are derived from frozen embryos which are left over from in vitro fertilization and would otherwise be discarded. At one point during embryogenesis, cells stop making exact copies of themselves and start to specialize. Embryonic stem cells will produce differentiated progeny at every successive step of division. When our development is complete, almost all cells of our body are restricted to produce other cells with specific functions. However, some cells with stem cell characteristics persist during the entire lifespan of an organism and those cells are called adult stem cells. We can find adult stem cells in skin, blood and intestine among others. Adult stem cells differ from embryonic stem cells by the fact that they can produce only limited numbers of cell types. Skin, for example, is a really fascinating organ to study. Adult skin stem cells reside in specific locations and they are responsible for the maintenance of the skin function. Every day, skin loses millions of cells, so skin stem cells proliferate and differentiate in order to keep this organ functional. Adult stem cells do not always differentiate in specific cell types. 
if they would proliferate continuously, producing always a differentiation of each cell, at one point they would just disappear. In fact, by sensing the need of the organ, adult stem cells are subjected to replicative choices. So they know exactly whether producing two exact copies of themselves, so a mechanism known as self renew one differentiated cells and one copy of themselves, and two differentiated cells. So scientists all around the world are trying to understand what are the signals that allow adult stem cells to do their choice correctly and determine their destiny, so their fate. This knowledge is allowing scientists to direct their differentiation towards specific cell types. But how far is stem cell research with all this knowledge from actually being applied to human health? In the last decade, stem cell research has made a terrific progress. For example, we understand nowadays how to turn embryonic cord blood stem cells into white or red blood cells. This is important to cure local leukemia patients. We can replace also big portions of the epidermis, for example, after heavy burn injuries, using autologous cells. And these cells are known to avoid the autoimmune rejection of a recipient. This epidermis is grown under artificial conditions using skin stem cells from the recipient itself. However, at the moment it is not possible to regenerate the whole skin, for example hair follicles or Sebastian's glands, some important elements of the skin are not being grown under artificial conditions so far. Other treatments like using muscle stem cells are at the moment also being tested. These could be used against arthritis, muscle pain or tendon injuries. Latest research, however, is directed to stimulate endogenous stem cells, avoiding invasive transplantation techniques. If we spin these thoughts a bit further, we could imagine that in the future we can regenerate, for example, our own limbs like arms and legs, Examples for this are already found in the nature. The Mexican salamander, for example, that can regenerate his limb and his retina. So far, we do not know if in the next 10, 20 or 100 years, uh, those, or the, those findings or this knowledge will be applied to patients. But if we have a look at how fast the research is progressing at the moment, we can be just optimistic. Unfortunately, some organs do not seem to have adult stem cells that can be used for research or treatment purposes. So, scientists have developed new technologies in order to obtain embryonic-like stem cells from fully differentiated somatic cells. But what are those new technologies? In 2006, the Nobel Prize Cynthia Yamanaka discovered that the simple expression of four genes, OT4, SOX2, KLA4 and CMIC, can revert a differentiated cell from adult into an embryonic state, turning back its biological clock and obtaining the so-called induced pluripotent stem cell. Process called cellular reprogramming constitute one of the most revolutionary discoveries in recent years and holds the big promise from stem cell research and regenerative medicine in the future. We know that these induced pluripotent stem cells have the same properties as embryonic stem cells. Once the reprogramming is complete, they can be potentially differentiated into any cell type of the organism. For example, 
from a cell isolated from the skin, we could produce heart, blood, or pancreatic cells. Moreover, this technology can bypass the ethical controversies regarding the use of human embryonic material. Although we still have a lot to learn about this process, the scientific community is very excited with the idea of creating patient-specific stem cells for transplantation therapies and pharmacological screening in humans. Never in the history of science have we been given such a gift of being able to use cells that can become any tissue or cell type in the body for the purposes of healing. It is still too early to say if embryonic, induced or adult pluripotent stem cells would be better in the future. But we do know that scientific research needs public engagement. Informed decision-making and participation are essential in the shaping of our future.